Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Adam Carroll. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ambassador Woodward. Um, through its program, Burma Task Force, the NGO I, I work with, Justice for All, has partnered with Rohingya leaders for 10 years now. We, of course, welcome continued discussion of Myanmar in the Council, but see little sign of hope for the vast number of Rohingya and other ethnic minorities displaced by the cruel Burmese military, nor do we see any sign that the current junta will allow meaningful repatriation with restoration of rights and homes. Therefore, we address a question to the UK as pen holder in this matter. Um, considering the obvious limits to consensus building in the council, together with the atrocities taking place both in Myanmar and in Ukraine, it seems to us time to acknowledge that the three Security Council members keeping the, the nation of Myanmar in a state of extreme crisis are Russia, China, and India. We note that the day after uh, the General Assembly voted to stop arms transfers to Myanmar, Russian and Burmese generals were meeting for exactly that purpose. All three countries sell arms to, to the generals. So my question is, which UN policies have been affected? Um, we don't put a lot of expectation on ASEAN or on the five point consensus, um, but um, we'd like to see um, actual action. Isn't it time to bring um, a resolution to a vote, at least to show the world where everyone stands? And if not, what action can be taken? Thank you for those questions, Madam Ambassador. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your con all of you for your continued focus uh, on Myanmar, which I know you'll remember as well as I do. Of course, the coup took place in the first days of our Security Council presidency last year, and we were able to bring the council together for uh, a series of statements expressing concern. But uh, I readily acknowledge that tragically the situation has got worse, not better since then. We're seeing uh, more violence uh, and I think the chances of peace uh, receding. Uh, so Alana, to your point, um, it is tragic that it's now a year since the five point consensus uh, was adopted and uh, we're seeing more violence rather than less, as I mentioned. Um, Thank you for all you're doing um, for child protection. I think it's really important through the work of uh, Save the Children. Um, we are having a private meeting of the Security Council um, at the end of our presidency, probably the 28th of April, um, and we'll continue to underline the importance of implementing uh, the five-point consensus. Um, and we are hoping... Uh, to hear not just from the, U the new UN uh, Special Envoy, Noel Herzer, uh, but also uh, from the ASEAN Special Envoy. So hear um, up-to-date reports of their most recent visits. But I underline again how valuable your work is, uh, particularly where you are on the ground and able to bring us um, reports uh, from outside the capital and from a wide range of uh, interlocutors. Um, I will add that I had the opportunity to meet um, the uh, NUG uh, foreign minister and human rights minister last week as well. And they were um, very clear in their commitment, um, not just very generously to uh, what is going on in Ukraine, but also uh, to human rights and uh, um, a very clear foreign policy for Myanmar. But of course, they are not currently in power in Myanmar. Um, and then uh, the question of arms sales, I agree, remains uh, a great concern um, with, you know, it's well known, I think, that uh, many of you of uh, Myanmar's arms now come from Russia and that's uh, they're being bought. And then how they get the money to do that is also um, uh, an important issue. So it's definitely uh, on our agenda as an issue of concern, although we haven't been able uh, to uh, stop it. But thank you for the work that you're doing to draw attention to it. And then, Adam, um, coming on to the question of Rohingya, um, we, you know, we do remain very aware of uh, the awful circumstances in which the Rohingya were forced to flee from Myanmar 
the difficulties they now face uh, in Bangladesh, but also the work that Bangladesh is doing, of course, to uh, try and uh, look after them and also the challenge of ensuring that they're able to return uh, in safety and with dignity uh, to uh, Myanmar. And again, this was something that the NUG human rights uh, minister raised with me, that they were very aware indeed of the importance of respecting minority rights in a way that perhaps had not been the case, which was, was not the case uh, before uh, when the Rohingyas were uh, expelled from uh, Myanmar. Uh, so something that remains very much uh, on our agenda. Um, I think to pick up your challenge, Adam, it is important for us to continue to work with the ASEANs. I know that uh, it can sometimes seem uh, slow, but I think the five-point consensus is important. They have done some, uh, for ASEAN, some quite important work in terms of excluding Myanmar from some of their meetings, and they do continue to engage and they are the neighbouring countries. But I think the, the optimum is that we work as the UN in close partnership uh, with them in order to try and uh, keep things moving forward and uh, bring a solution to uh, the coup, which is now well over a year old. Thank you for those questions.